Welcome, Welcome to, to Valley, Valley Creek, Creek Kids. Kids. My name is Emma and this is our friend Josh. Hey everyone. <laughs> oh kids, we are so glad to see you. So how about you turn to us or someone near you and welcome them in by giving them a high five. Are you ready? Set, go. Hello. Hey, Josh. Hey, kids. <laughs> all right, all right, tune it back in, everyone. We are so glad that you're here with us. We really are. It's a great day because hope is here, everyone is welcome, and Jesus changes everything. Yes, Jesus is hope, he is here with us, and so we are going to spend time with him and each other today. And a great way to do that is by playing a game. Ooh. So what do you say, kids? How about we play a game? Sounds great, it's game time. Hey kids, we are so excited to play a game with you today. Yes, my name is Emily and this is Gentry. Today we are playing one of our favorites, Will It Float? Here's how it works. Emily is going to hold up an item to drop into this container of water. And if you think it's going to float, then you'll go to this side of the room. If you don't think it's going to float, but instead you think it's gonna sink, then you'll go to this side of the room. Then I will drop it in the water and we'll see what happens. I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. What do you think, Gentry? Oh yeah. Okay, Emily, what is our first item? It's a Rubik's Cube. What do you think, kids? Will it float? If you think yes, it will float, go to this side of the room. If you think no, it's going to sink, go to this side of the room. Float over here, sink over there. Gentry, what do you think? Is it gonna float or is it gonna sink? I think it's gonna sink. Okay, are you ready? Let's see. Oh, it floats! It did! <laughs> wow, okay. Are you guys ready for our second item? Okay, Emily, what is our second item? It's Play-Doh! What do you think, kids? Will it float? If you think yes, it will float, go to this side of the room. If you think no, it's going to sink, go to this side of the room. Float over here and sink over here. Okay, Gentry, what do you think? Sink or float? I think it's gonna sink. Okay, let's see. Wow, it sinks. Wow. Okay, are you guys ready for our last one? Okay, Emily, what is our final item? It's an Oreo. What do you think, kids? Will it float? If you think yes, it will float, go to this side of the room. If you think no, it's gonna sink, go to this side of the room. Float over here and sink over here. Gentry, what do you think? Sink or float? I think it's gonna float. Okay, are you ready to find out? Let's see. It floats, I was right. You were. Awesome, that was so much fun. Thanks for playing, kids. We'll see you next time, bye. Bye. Thanks for playing, kids. I'm so glad we get to have fun together. The kingdom of God is full of joy and fun. It really is. And I know he also has some really great truth for us to discover today, too. Yes, he does. So let's get ready to receive it. Let's remember and declare the good news of Jesus together. Yeah, okay, come on everyone, stand on up and join us in shouting out the good news of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Here we go. That is the good news, that because God is good, he sent Jesus to offer us forgiveness so that now we can live in relationship with him forever, knowing that we are loved and that with him, everything is possible. Yes, kids, we hope you always remember that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's respond to the truth of who Jesus is and what he has done for us by worshiping him. Yes, let's praise Jesus and give him our time and attention as we sing and dance to a song together. It's gonna be so much fun. Now, if you sat back down, go ahead and stand back up. Let's worship. My eyes are on you, feet on the ground. No turning back, no turning back. 
turning around I hear you calling Calling me to step out Step out and trust you Without a doubt I'm taking my step with you Taking my step with you Wherever you lead me Lord, I will follow I'm taking my step with you Taking my step with you Wherever you lead me Lord, I will follow I will follow My eyes are on you Feet on the ground No turning back No turning around I hear you calling Calling me to step out Step out and trust you without a doubt I'm taking my step with you Taking my step with you Wherever you lead me Lord, I will follow I'm taking my step with you Taking my step with you Wherever you lead me Lord, I will follow
All right, thanks for worshiping with us, kids. Now, you can go ahead and sit back down. Yes, everyone, find your spot, get settled, and I don't want anyone to miss what's next. So once you're sitting, go ahead and take a deep breath in and out. All right, let's do that one more time okay. together. Everybody take a deep breath in and out. Great job. All right, Josh, can you tell us what we're discovering today? Well, kids, today we are discovering that in Jesus, we are friends with God. Yeah. You see, God never meant for us to ever be alone. Mm -hmm. He loves us and wants to be friends with us. Yeah, he wants to have a relationship with us. Yeah. God wants to know us and for us to know him. He loves us and he wants to be close to us like our best friend. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for us to discover more about that. So kids, let's check this out. If you're ready, go ahead and shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Great, here we go. Hey kids, I'm Sarah and this is my friend Jed. Howdy there kids. We sure are glad you're here with us. We are. And today we are discovering that in Jesus, we are friends with God. Yes. And do I have some questions about that, Miss Sarah? First of all, what? Since when? The big guy up in the sky is my friend, creator of heaven and earth, king of kings, that guy? Yes, he is, Jed. God wants to have a relationship with every single one of us. He does? All of us? Yeah. The Bible tells us that God doesn't want us to go through life alone. He invites us into relationship with him. As a matter of fact, God's son, Jesus, came to earth and defeated sin and death so that nothing could ever stand in the way of us having a relationship with God. So because of what Jesus did, we get to be friends with God? That's right. That's God's heart for us, for us to know him and have a relationship with him. Check it out. In John 15, 15, Jesus told his disciples, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Right there, Jesus was saying that God doesn't want us to just go around and do a bunch of stuff for him like servants. Instead, he wants to be our friend. He wants to know us and for us to know him. Really? Yeah. Jed, kids, there's actually a story in the Bible that I would love to share with you guys. It's all about this. Oh, well, let's hear it then. Come on now, it's story time. All right, hang on. We're ready. Here we go. This Bible story starts in Mark 3. Jesus had been with crowds of people, teaching them and healing them. When he left and went up on a mountainside, away from the crowds. But Jesus didn't go by himself. He invited 12 of his followers to come with him, inviting them to come and spend time with him as his friends. There on the mountain, Jesus appointed the 12 to be his disciples, giving them authority to go out and teach people about the love of God and heal people with his power. So that's what they did. The 12 disciples continued to travel with Jesus, teaching and doing miracles. They got to bring hope to others. Wow, so it's like you said, they got to know Jesus and do things with him. They were his friends. That's right, and then, in Mark 16, the Bible tells us that even after Jesus left earth and went to heaven to be with God, God's spirit was still with the disciples, moving through them everywhere they went as they continued to share hope. Jed, kids, those 12 disciples were Jesus's friends, God's friends. Jesus called them to be with him. They walked together, talked together, laughed together, cried together, ate together. They did everything together and he never gave up on them. He never left them. He never abandoned them. Even after Jesus left earth, the Holy Spirit was with them always, like he's with us today. Wow, Jesus sounds like a really good friend, don't he? Yes, and guess what? That is the kind of friendship that God invites us to too. The God of the universe, who has all power and authority, who created heaven and earth, who raises the dead and heals the sick, calls you by name and says, you are my friend. That's amazing. I can hardly believe it. Hey, God, I'm real glad to be friends with you. 
This is great news. Although, Miss Sarah, usually I can see my friends when we hang out. Like, this, the disciples even. They were walking and talking with Jesus right here on earth. But I mean, where is God? Do I have to go up to heaven to hang out with them? Just go right on up, ring the doorbell. Hey God, what's up man, how you doing? No, Jed, not at all. Remember, after Jesus left earth, God gave us the Holy Spirit. When we become beloved sons and daughters in God's family, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. The Holy Spirit is God, his presence. Jesus told the disciples in John 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit coming to be with us. The Holy Spirit is our best friend. He is our comforter, our guide, and our encourager. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, God, is with me to be my friend no matter where I am. Yeah. Now, remember, Miss Sarah, I live on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere. I don't even have good phone service or a technical address registered with the city. Are you sure the Holy Spirit can find me out there? Yes, Jed, I'm sure. As a beloved son or daughter in God's family, no matter where you are, what you are doing, or even what time it is, God, the Holy Spirit, is with you. It's really not a question of, is God with me? It's a question of, am I aware that God is with me? Woo that sure is a good question. Okay, so if I know God is with me and he's my friend, what do we do to hang out? How do I be his friend? Should I take him out for some ice cream or something? Well, Jed, kids, what do you usually do with your friends? Oh, well, for starters, we spend time together. Some of my friends are ranchers just like me, so we like to hang out in the field, roping, fishing, playing horseshoes, cornhole, hoops and sticks, whatever, you know. Wow, okay, so you spend time together, that's awesome. Now, when you're spending time together in the field, uh, roping, cornhole, all the things, do you guys talk at all? Oh yeah, you know, we'll talk about our life, we'll talk about our cows, we'll talk about whether or not the pond's high pond's low. Sometimes we even make a fire, roast marshmallows, and talk around that campfire. That's great, Jed. It is. My friends always ask me questions about my life and stuff because they care about me and I care about them. I love my friends. I bet you do. Now, because you love your friends, Jed, do you ever do anything to help them or serve them? Oh, of course. One time, Brooklyn, she wasn't feeling so good. And so I went over and brought her some soup. Some might call it stew because it's thicker than most soups, but where I come from, it's soup because it ain't as thick as stew. It was a real tasty recipe my mama used to make me, and then I realized she needed some help taking care of her ranch because, you know, she won't feel so good. So I helped her out, and I mended some fences and, and just picked up around the farmhouse, you know? Well, that's awesome, Jed. It sounds like you're a great friend to Brooklyn. So let's review. So one, you spend time with your friends, right? Hanging out and enjoying things together. Mm -hmm. uh, and then two, you talk to each other, right? Oh, yeah. Not just about boring stuff like the weather, but oh, about no. real things like your life, yep. listening and asking questions. And three, you serve each other. You do things to help your friends because you love them. That sounds just about right. Yeah, well, guess what? you can do those same things with God. I can? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, here, let's talk about it. What are some ways that we can spend time with God? Hmm, well, every week here in Valley Creek Kids, we say we wanna spend time with God and worship. That's right, we can worship, we can read the Bible, cause scripture is God's word, it's him talking to us. Or we can also just invite God to be part of our whole entire day. We can say, hey God, will you help me be aware that you are with me today? And then all day long, you can know that he is with you in whatever you're doing. Okay, I can do that. God, get ready. We're about to have so much fun hanging out. I bet you are, Jed. Okay, so next one. How do we talk to God? Well, we talk to God when we pray, right? Yeah, we do. Prayer is talking to God. We can tell him about our day and how we're feeling. We can ask him questions. We can listen to see what he's saying because God does speak to us. Okay, now what was that last thing again, Miss Sarah? Oh, serving each other. When we love our friends, we do things for them. 
well, how do we serve God? He don't need nothing from me. He's got all the stuff and he can do anything he wants. Well, that's that's true, Jed. God doesn't need our help. But when we know how much he loves us and serves us, our natural response is to want to express that back to him. So how do we serve God then? Well, a great way to serve God is by serving his people. In the Bible, Matthew 25, 40 says, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So guys, you can ask God to show you how to serve the people in your life. You can ask him to show you how to meet their needs. Maybe it's just like you said earlier, and you give your friend a bowl of soup when they're sick, or you do something kind for someone else. Okay, now, do you know what sounds kind of fun about that, Miss Sarah? What, Jed? Well, it sounds like, really, serving people can also be another way for us to spend time with God. Because we're talking to Him, asking Him to be with us, and to help us see how to meet people's needs. Yes, you are exactly right, Jed. Even when we are serving God, we aren't just doing things for Him. We are doing things with Him. I am very much looking forward to this friendship. Me and God are going to have a great time together. I am sure you are, Jed. So... Kids, today we discovered that in Jesus, we are friends with God. God loves us and he is with you. Let's spend some time being aware of his presence right now as we pray. Can you all go ahead and close your eyes to tune out distractions and hold out your hands like this to show that you are ready to receive what God has for you today? Yes, we can, Miss Sarah. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for making a way for us to have a relationship with God. Because of you, there is nothing that stands in between us and God. God loves us. He is with us. He is for us. And so, Jesus, would you just help us to be more aware of his presence in our life every single day? I declare that we will partner with God, that we will live in relationship with him. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. You guys can go ahead and open your eyes. Thanks for joining us today. That's all we have for now, right, Miss Sarah? That's right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. So kids, we get to be friends with God. Yes, God loves us and he never wants us to be alone. Mm -hmm. He loves to be with you and wants to have a relationship with you. So check out what he says to us in the Bible in Hebrews 13, five. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God loves us and he will never leave us. He mm -hmm. is called us friends and he is with us no matter what. Isn't that so cool? Kids, how about we all say the Bible verse together to help us remember what we discovered today? I love it. All right, everyone repeat after me. You ready? Ready. <laughs> okay. Never will I leave you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13, five. Hebrews 13, five. Nice, okay, so now how about we say that again? Oh wait, oh, actually, we're gonna sing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, everybody in your best opera voice, okay? Like this. <laughs> everybody, let's do some vocal warm-ups here. Clear, okay. clear your throat. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then me, 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 me. Come on, Josh. Me, 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 me. Okay, everyone, you, are we ready? Are we warmed up? Yeah. Yeah? All right, repeat after me. Okay. Never will I leave you, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, never will I forsake you, Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. <laughs> <laughs> Great job! That was so silly. That but really I, was. I hope everyone remembers that verse from the Bible now. <laughs> I definitely won't be forgetting that. <laughs> well, kids, I'm so glad we got to discover more about God today. Remember, today we discovered that in Jesus, we are friends with God. That's right. Well, kids, it's time to spend some time talking and praying about that discovery. So in just a minute, if you're joining us in person at one of our local campuses, you're going to get into your circles. Yes. Everybody say circles. Circles. <laughs> circles are where we follow and become like Jesus together. Mm -hmm. And if you're joining us online from home, there'll be some questions on the screen so that you can do the same. Well, kids, we are so glad that you joined us today. Mm -hmm. Go always remembering that and say these with us if you know them, yeah. that God, God is good. good. Jesus, Jesus has, has forgiven me. me. I am loved and everything, everything is possible. possible. We'll see everyone next time. Bye. Bye.